So this video is supposed to be about the uh, veno solenoids mainly. Uh, we took them out. Sorry about the shaky video. I'm not sponsored or anything like that. So I'm just doing this with my iPhone, just trying to help you guys out, like I always say. Uh, so clean these out real good, the holes here, the chamfer, and then lubricate the chamfer as well as the O-rings going back in. And you'll have a much easier time uh, dealing with that. Stuff some rags in there. So that way any oil that comes out is not on your belt and you're not having a major cleanup mission when you're done. Um, and we'll go on to this. Uh, this little device right here, I know you guys aren't gonna have it and you guys are probably looking at it going, you know, what the heck is that? But it's a frequency generator, PWM, pulse width modulation. This, that's how these things run. They run on a pulse. They're not just on off. They're like uh, our transmission solenoids are really uh, similar. So these will be able to control a pressure rather than just turn it on and off. So you can change the frequency right here, up or down, right? And then you can also change the duty cycle. So that's like how long it's on versus off. So let's say right here, it'll be on 25% of the time and it'll be off 75% of the time and it will pulse uh, 30 times in a second. That's what uh, the frequency is, all right? How many times in one second? Or HZ is the abbreviation, like on your multimeters uh, for frequency. Um, that one right there, see? So HZ, frequency. Anyway, so what I've done here, this was built for a specific purpose. I've ended up using it uh, to help out for things like this uh, for now until I put it into what it's supposed to be in. This part of it's just a timer and they just kind of um, hot glued it together with, uh, you know, it's just kind of rigged really, a whole bunch of hot glue and a, a freaking belt button that I had laying around and, uh, and I made it work, all right? So this, is, this part of it is just a timer and then this is your PWM and then I just have some, uh, some power leads over here so I can just hook up to turn it on and off as I, as I need. And I just got it hooked up to a lawn tractor battery that's under there. All right, so first thing I did, I see everyone spraying them out with like brake clean or carburetor cleaner or whatever, trying to dissolve the sludge and stuff that's in there. Um, but no one runs them. So if you don't run them, there's still stuff stuck in there, right? Now, I don't recommend running these things in just like a solvent, like brake clean or carburetor cleaner, because I think you'll cause wear at that point. So what I did was, I sprayed it out first, and then I got this coolant bottle here, and I cut the lid off it, and just kind of cleaned it up inside real good. And I put uh, Marvel Mystery Oil. You can also use like ATF, because it's high in detergent too. It'll help dissolve some sludge. And I'll tell you what, I put this in there, and just enough that I don't want to submerge the connector or anything, right? But I'll drop it in here, and I'll run it again. I already did this one. But I pushed my little doorbell button, you see my timer counting down four seconds right so and i'll let you guys look at it and listen to it you see it's obviously creating some fluid motion just running it in there right well when i took it out of there i took the flashlight and i really looked at this fluid carefully and guess what i could see that there was debris in there that wasn't in there before so this works. All you really need, you don't even need this fancy connector. Just some alligator clips, just very carefully placed, can work. This is like a standard um, Bosch fuel injector connector that you can get at the junkyard. Just clip it off of any car, 10 seconds, right? And then just hook it up to this and then hook power up to this. And um, I got this off of eBay. It's like less than 15 bucks. So you can just easily get that and just hook it right up to power when you want it on. I like the timer because I don't have to worry about disconnecting it, all right? I don't want to run them too long, just long enough to get some circulation through them, and then I'll take it out, and I'll spray it out with the brake clean or the carb clean, whatever you have, you know, and then put them back in the oil. I wouldn't advise just putting them back in the car without running them in the oil one more time so they're lubricated and ready to go, all right? So um, what I'll do now is I'll take this one out since it's pretty well lubricated. And then we're gonna clean this up real good before we go back in with it. But you could, I can try to get zoomed in on it. Let me get my little headlight in here. And I'll slow the frequency down too. 
So let's slow it down to like 10 pulses a second. And let's make it like 15% duty cycle, right? So we can really watch this thing move. And see that? Run it one more time. Okay, now, since that one was cleaned and the other one wasn't, Brian, can you come here for a second? My helper. He's a weirdo. <laughs> anyway, all right, disconnect that. This one? Yeah. I only have one hand because I'm holding the phone. Connect it to the other one. It's directional, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so plug it in there good. Good. Good? good? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll run this one again. This one, for, actually, for the first time. And you hear it, it sounds a lot softer. It's probably still got motor oil inside of it, which is a lot thicker. So it's kind of dampening it versus this one. But I will tell you, by doing this, I saw debris end up in there. So that's going to work. And then we got a uh, new... A lot of people try to reuse that stuff. I don't want to end up with leaks, so we got two new kits. It's like a little plastic ring and, and your O-ring. You'll notice one's missing because the O-rings tend to stay in, so you'll have to just grab them and pull them out. One of them just fell, uh, so no big deal. Um, just an O-ring, and I have new ones. So it comes with that hard plastic ring, which goes on first, and then you put your O-ring on and, and you, you know torque up your bolts to specification which I'm pretty sure is somewhere around nine or 10 newton meters, not very much. And uh, there's the part number. And this is, uh, like I said, a 2008 328i. All right. So we just wanted to try to give you guys a little bit of insight onto how to clean these things out better. And um, I'll try to post another video once we're all done with the car and let you guys know how it ran and if it took care of the problem.